Hi, I'm Carrie Case, and I'm going to be your facilitator for this lecture. Today we're going to talk about definition paragraphs. Now, I've broken the lecture into two pieces. The first part, we're going to talk about what a definition paragraph is, and the second part, we're going to talk more about how to structure it and what it should look like. So, let's get started. So, the first thing to go over is, is definition. So, to define is to explain clearly what a term or idea means. It is an explanation of what something is. And it is used to explain unknown words or ideas that your reader may not know. Now, you are the expert here. So, the, the very vital, vital uh, secret here is to make sure that you convey what you know to your reader. And we're going to assume that your reader doesn't know what you know. So, uh, definition is also often used academically for you as a student to demonstrate what you know. So, when, when an instructor is trying to see if you have understood the, the terminology or if you've understood the concept of a certain idea, they're often going to ask you to write a definition paper or to define what something means or to define what something looks like. So, definition is often used as a tool to demonstrate your knowledge. Now, the skill of defining clearly is useful in just about any kind of a, a career, or any kind of an academic area that you would be in. It's used very regularly. If you're in a psychology class, you might be used to, to define certain aspects of psychology, education, business, politics, whatever it is. So there's a wealth of information that you may be asked to define as a student. So what is definition? The first thing to understand is that uh, definition pretty much has three major parts. And the first one is the term being defined or the topic being described. Now, this is, this is not a new idea. We've been talking about the structure of topic sentences for quite some time, and we know that each topic sentence has to have, indeed, the topic. In this case, in definition, the term or idea would be your topic, so it must be in uh, that topic sentence or in that structure of writing. It must also include the group or category to which the term or topic belongs, and that, that gives your reader kind of a basis of, of to begin to organize understanding of a, of a concept. If you just say, well, it's a feline, then they really don't have any grasp of what that may be. But if you said a feline is an animal and, and go further into detail within your explanation, you have a better chance of making yourself clear to your reader. Then, of course, another vital part of definition is its distinguishing characteristics. And this is where definition does get very tricky because definition and description can run into each other very easily here. Uh, we're using description as a tool to define our concept, but we're not doing a description paper. So if we're going to talk about a moth and what a moth looks like and what color a moth may be, we're using those as, as distinguishing, defining characteristics. We're not using it just to describe a moth. That's not our goal here. So definition often begins by putting the subject into a larger category or class. And our example here is a trout is a kind of fish. So if someone didn't know what a trout is, they may have an accepted common knowledge of fish, and so we could easily say it's a kind of fish. Now, we obviously have to get much more specific because we're going to begin to talk about what it looks like, what it's structured like, and, and, and the traits that make it uniquely a trout. But we're going to begin general and then get more specific as we go. So use identifying characteristics to create a unique picture of the subject for the reader. And, and this is very important. Those, those identifying characteristics create that picture. And without that picture, our reader is unable to stay with us. So we want to make sure that we're very clear on what it looks like. And that's where that description starts to kind of trickle in, and we have to be very careful it doesn't take over. And examples are often used to explain definition. Uh, remember that, that pretty much everything we're learning throughout this course is some type of illustration. We have basic illustration, which is just uh, examples, exemplification. And then we have cause and effect and comparison contrast. These are all types and structures of illustration. Definition is another one of those structures of illustration because we're giving examples to support what we're trying to make clear. So let's look at the main and primary piece of our definition paragraph, and that's going to be our topic sentence. Now, remember, we have been talking about the formula for our topic sentence. We've been talking about the fact that we need, number one, our topic, 
Number two, our pattern of organization. And number three, the point or argument that we're trying to make when we're going to introduce what we're going to speak about. So we have to make sure that our topic sentence of our definition paragraph has the term or topic we're explaining. That's our number one. That's our topic. We have to have that within our topic sentence. Without it, we're lost. And it should also place the topic in a general group or category to which it belongs. And this is when we begin that definition. If we say that, that, that a trout is a fish, we're starting to define it and put it into a category. And by saying it is, that's when we start to get into that definition pattern of organization. And it may also provide one or more distinguishing characteristics. And again, we have to be very careful we don't go into that pattern of description. We're just using those distinguishing characteristics to show how they are indeed unique. Now, often you're going to be asked to define an unfamiliar topic. And, and remember that we typically assume that we know more than our reader does. Even if our reader is an instructor, we, that instructor is looking for us to exhibit our knowledge. So we have to assume our reader doesn't know what we know. So because we're assuming our reader doesn't know what we know, we're going to assume that our topic is unfamiliar to our audience. So because we're making sure it's unfamiliar to our audience, we have to make it clear. So one of the most common ways is to compare an unfamiliar topic to one that is familiar to our readers. I had a student one semester who did it very well, and, and what he decided to use for his definition is he decided to use stickball. Um, and stickball is, is like the sport, and to be honest, it looks a little like baseball, and that's what he did. He compared stickball to looking like baseball, and what it is you play in the street, and you use cars and telephone poles and fire hydrants as your bases, you use manhole covers as your, your home plate, um, and, and, and so on and so forth. And so he used the comparison between stickball, which his students, his audience may not have been familiar with, and began to compare it to baseball, which his audience may have a more common knowledge experience with. And then he began to, to narrow down uh, what his topic looks like. And so he had to explain how his topic was different from, say, baseball. Instead of, you know, the bags of bases, you know, stickball often used cars as bases. And that's how he began to then uh, pull, pull little bits and pieces out of that common knowledge assumption and started putting in the unique traits of stickball. Now, you have to be sure to explain unfamiliar terms that you may use. If you can avoid the unfamiliar terms, it's usually kind of nice. Um, but sometimes you just outright have to say bat, you know, uh, outright have to say club or, or have to use another kind of unfamiliar term. And if that's the case, make sure that you find a way to define that term. So in summary, remember that definition uh, is a method used to tell someone what something is or what it means. As a writer, you must be very specific and vivid in your explanations. And to be honest, you want to stay into that literal frame of mind. Because if you can literally create that picture for your reader, then your reader has a better chance of being able to stick with you and what you're trying to get them, uh, him or her, to understand. And make sure to be uh, able, or make sure to use understandable examples. And remember that we have to err on the side of our reader, not on the side of us. We we can't go by what we understand. We have to make sure that our reader understands. Okay, thank you. Hope this is helpful.